so forth. And we uh, uh, had a program, the sister said, yeah, if you want to get in the class, you have to fill out an application and write an essay, why do you want to be in this class? And uh, so when you have a classroom that's just filled with uh, students who want to be there, uh, it was pretty successful. In the 10 years uh, we taught down Potosi, we had 13 graduations. And it's through Sister Barbara and Miss Mary's efforts that uh, uh, the graduations, uh, they got caps and gowns down that farm. We got permission to have relatives come in. They even got permission to have desserts and so forth down there. It was a very successful uh, program. But anyway, uh, what's yarn got to do with all this? Well, I get pretty nosy. I walk around and uh, somebody said, Mr. Spirit, you're, you're more well recognized in the ward down here because I stick my nose in everything. I'm trying to find out what's going on. One day I was walking around, there's two old guys sitting around in one of the education rooms, and I tried to evaluate their age. They looked like they were about 100 years old. <laughs> they had literally had beards down to here, and they were knitting. Oh. And I looked and I said, what are you doing? I said, I've never seen this before. He said, uh, well, we're knitting some hats. They can't use knitting needles, but they have those around Looms. Well, I don't know what you call them. They, are they looms? Yeah. And, and then they fill them, and then they can make. Yeah, they make uh, hats like this, uh, and they make baby hats, middle size adult hats, and so forth. And uh, and I, there was just these two guys, and they weren't long for the world at looking at their age, and. Uh, I said, what do you do with these hats? And they said, well, they think the management bundles them up and puts them in a box and sends them down to St. Jude's. And I looked at these old guys and I said, St. Jude's? I said, that's in Tennessee. Well, what in the heck are we sending stuff to Tennessee for? We need this stuff in Missouri. And uh, the fellow said, well, if uh, you get us some yarn, we'll uh, knit things up. And now I think there's... There's over 50 guys down and out that are knitting. And I was glad to see some men here today uh, knitting because uh, now I've confirmed that now all male knitters are not in jail. <laughs> this is proof positive. <laughs> uh, for a while I caught some classes. Just wait. <laughs> The, the, uh, uh, we also uh, were teaching some classes in Bonterre and they had a program and I was able to get some yarn down to them too. But what sorely limits, you, Barbara will correct me because she knows that, well I'm not a liar but she says I'm full of hyperbole and uh, she said that uh, what I say is pretty much the truth. And uh, as far as knitting, you say, well, you need needles, needles to knit. These are things I pulled out some of the yarn that was donated. These are never going to get into Potosi. These needles and even crochet hooks are not allowed in Potosi. Uh, and, well, they're not allowed in any of the uh, uh, state uh, prison facilities. Right. Oh, I know. So I was figuring out how they make some of these things here. And uh, I've got a couple of things I want to show you. Everybody's interested in this. What the fellows have to use, they can use those round looms, and we have the straight looms to make scarves or however they put things together. I'm not a knitter, but you, these guys can be pretty ingenious. But our sister Barbara, it's a comb with all the middle teeth taken out. And they have to be what they call unbreakable comb because the ends of the 
cones they can use to hook things through. If you have a cheap plastic cone, they, they break. They could try chopsticks. Well, no, but the next thing that they can use, this is just a plain wooden pen pencil that has a notch put in it. That's what they use for a crochet hook, some of the things they use. What well, they can't use for crochet hooks. Probably if you tried to hit somebody with it, it would break because it's just a pencil. Yeah, they and can have they can have pencils. They can write letters and do homework and stuff like that. So the pencil uh, is not proved to be dangerous. Uh, but these are the tools they have. And of course, the round looms are, are uh, amazing. And when they come up with their own ideas, this is one of the fellows came up with this. Next time. This is very popular in uh, some of the outreach programs, and they make scar scars to match. And you should see some of these kids marching around with these. Amazing. Well, I've been. Over the last 10 years, we've been getting calls. Once they, uh, we start generating some product, uh, there's about 30 organizations around town that have asked for good, particularly in the winter time. The colder it gets, the more phone calls you get. Uh, uh, some of the uh, places we've taken, well, there's the Touche Medical Center in East St. Louis. Uh, there's uh, St. Patrick Center downtown. Salvation Army, uh, Goodwill, uh, uh, a lot of the Wellston Center, the Greater St. Louis uh, Food Bank, just tons of places. There's so much outreach in St. Louis that uh, it, it amazes me all the time uh, to see how many people are out there reaching out to help neighbors. And when I was able to give these guys in prison an opportunity to help out. Uh, it seemed to be very satisfactory. And when I delivered the product, I said, there's only one thing we request from people who receive the knit goods. I said, you have to write a letter to the prison and thank the guys. Uh, we have, uh, well, one story, this is a, a fun story. Uh, Cardinal Plenin Hospital has a um, uh, special needs clinic for autistic kids. It's a big clinic and it's one of the biggest and best in the uh, country. And they, uh, it's funded uh, by the Knights of Columbus and they have uh, all these kids down there with special needs and this is their, one of their magazines they put out once or twice a year, and on the cover of it shows a young girl with uh, a dog. The dog is a labradoodle. It's a lab uh, poodle mix, and that's their service animal at the time. They have several other service dogs down there. And the director of the clinic said, uh, Vince, uh, could your fellas make toys toy dogs that look like that. I say, darn if I know. I, say, I don't know what they can do. <laughs> uh, I don't know their background. So I went down, showed them the picture of the dog, uh, gave them a few instructions, you know, gave them some black yarn and so forth. And a couple of weeks later, I come, come in and the fellows come out and greet me and they said, Mr. Stewart, we've got a prototype of the dog. And I said, oh, great. And uh, I pull out this dog, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I said, fellas, this doesn't look like a dog. I said, it looks like a rat. <laughs> and I said, you're, you're going to scare the bejesus out of any kids who get this. I said, we're going to have to work on this. So I had a friend who um, had um, uh, 
some book, knitting book on how to make knit panels for kids. And I took it down and gave them to them. And Come up with those big floppy ears, like the dog and everything. And, uh, and one of the uh, best stories I have about this is uh, one day I came in uh, to the prison yard, and another elderly man, well, the elderly, he's, he's, he's more a kid. He's, <laughs> he's just 50 years old. He comes running up to me and says, Mr. Stewart, Mr. Stewart, he says, Guess what? I said, I don't know. He said, uh, my dad came and visited me yesterday. And I said, that's great. He said, how'd it go? He said, great. He said, <laughs> I told him I made these dogs. <laughs> I don't know why I do this. But uh, he said, my dad told me he was proud of me. Yeah. And that was the first time in his life that his father had said that to him. But the guys who make these dogs, they're really skilled technicians. They came up with this on their own pretty much. And, uh, uh, but the dogs are really popular. Yeah, they stuff them. Yeah, old socks. Well, they're not dirty old socks. The, uh, the prison has a laundry there that has really strong uh, detergents and everything, bleaches and everything. They wash the heck out of these socks and then they cut them in strips and uh, uh, let them go with that. Uh, and then Cardinal Plenum was always the leader also. Uh, they are always asking me to do stuff. They said, Vince, can you make some quilts for the kids? He said, these kids with autism, they like really heavy blankets and sheets. And I said, well, I don't know. I said, what's the thing? She gave me some instructions on how to quilt. And they said, you take, you take 10 or 12 bed sheets and quilt them together. And I said, we don't have quilting facilities. We don't have those long arm things. We, I know we can't make uh, those heavy blankets uh, for kids, but maybe they can knit a blanket. Well, they came up, fellows are uh, make these amazing blankets and they're really heavy. I picked one up one time and said, this must weigh 20 pounds. <laughs> they said, different ones, yeah. But there's so many different places in St. Louis that uh, survive and maintain uh, uh, these wonderful program, all the volunteer efforts and everything. Like uh, this little picture here. There's a little little girl there, Paula, and she has a hat on. She's uh, a resident of a, a program down in the city. I don't know if any of you heard of it. It's called Almost Home. Uh, the Franciscan Sisters on program for these young girls age 13, 14, 15, 16 that were pregnant and they take them in they let the girls have their babies and stay there until they're adults and they can take over it. Uh, that, that's, how great is that? <laughs> and uh, 
some of the byproducts. This is a little hat. Uh, hat. And I, I don't know where they get the patterns. I don't. I, I have no help as far as any is concerned. But I, you know, don't say I mind. They don't have access to anything on. Oh, ne never. Little booties and uh, St. Mary's Hospital has a program also for indigent mothers and so forth. And they, uh, uh, these uh, friend of mine, Alice, that runs the Sweet Babies program. And every one of those babies goes home right now with hat and booties and and, uh, and, the, and the list goes on and on. Uh, and, uh, well, sister and I, uh, we've been to several places. Uh, question and how many hats have you distributed? Oh, <laughs> I asked. Our friend Steve, he's one of the inmates who monitors the iron company and things going on. This was about four or five years ago when it started it up. And uh, he said, Mr. Seward, how many hats you think? Just just hats, not scarves or booties or anything. He said, how many hats you think we've given you to take out? And I said, oh, probably a thousand. He said, you're not even close. He said, it's three to four thousand of these hats that go out. That, the uh, programs and the need, uh, it's nothing to distribute hundreds of hats to program for like the Greater St. Louis Food Bank, that's one of the recipients, and the, uh, some of the schools, some schools in the city, kids can't go out for recess if they're not dressed warmly, and we give hats to schools, and kids can go put, get a hat from the teacher, and they go out and uh, it goes on and on. I think I've gone on and on. <laughs> uh, sister, do you have any more comments? That, uh, but uh, I don't go down and teach anymore, but I do uh, still uh, gather yarn. How do you get your yarn? Uh, have friends in different organizations around town, usually they're um, not-for-profit churches and things like that, that, uh, you know, prisons have to be very careful. Now, if one of you, just on your own, you want to get some yarn and take it down to Tosi, they're not going to take it. They don't know what you have in there. You could have drugs or whatever. So the churches usually collect it, and I identify which churches and whatnot, and then my wife and I have to go through all the yarn, a lot of stuff like this, um, and and then it still has to be x-rayed and checked by other people to make sure all the yarn is safe. Uh, but uh, um, Saint Joan of Arc School collected yarn for us. Um, in my community, the Sisters of the Precious Blood of O'Fallon. Uh, we our median age is 79.8, so we have sisters who are dying, and many of them leave us yarn, so that gets down to Potosi. So, and if you finish a project and you have extra yarn but you don't know what to do with it, they can figure out how to, you know, do something with it. So, contact Vince on that card, and he'll be glad to take your yarn. Or um, my ministry, my parish ministry for prayer shawls, we sometimes get donations that we can't use, like you were saying, smaller balls, some mm -hmm. leftover stuff that I package up and send to Vince. So if you guys have stuff, they mostly like acrylic yarn. Is that correct, Vince? Yeah, well, they'll, they'll knit anything. They'll knit yeah. anything. Okay, so if you've got stuff left over, if you get it to me, I'll make sure it gets to Vince too. So you don't you don't have to figure out the binary phone number. <laughs> I have a very good friend. She uh, works uh, in uh, uh, person at All Saints Parish in University City, and she's saying how successful the program is going because she told me a couple of weeks ago at Sunday Mass, the ushers are going around passing the uh, collection basket around, 
and it came back with a skein of yarn in it. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's about 30 churches or nonprofits that are on the list I gave to Joan. Uh, that, uh, they collect things and then I uh, take down. I have a, a friend who helps me drop it down. Um, and now the uh, prison is helping us out. Instead of me driving down to Potosi every time I get yarn, uh, I just drive it down to Hillsborough and they have a Department of Correction truck that meets me and I turn over the yarn to them down there because that, that's a two hour drive down there. But to Hillsborough, nothing. How did this program get started at Potosi and do the men have to do anything special to qualify to men? Um, well, uh, there's a uh, woman, she's the, uh, she's the IAC, which is the Inmate Activity Coordinator. Uh, she took over position after I got these guys, some of these guys knitting, and she's very enthusiastic about um, making this uh, program a success. And one of those handouts is on there is from the Department of Corrections. It's uh, it's called the Restorative Justice Program, and uh, it tells us a lot about it. It has a little hat on there on the front of it. Uh, and, but I haven't been able to help with knitting instructions. Uh, I, I can just get the yarn down there. And, and first couple of guys knitting, and some of the guys, this was a real challenge. How do, you, how do you make something like this with a pencil? That's, but they'll sit there. This this take months for the guys to make something like this. What about instructional magazines and books? Yeah, I've been able to bring some of those down there. Uh, and like the book that showed them how to put a dog together because it didn't look like a rat. <laughs> but in any case, it's just the goodwill of... Uh, people uh, you know, like Georgia here, my friend Georgia Crenshaw, <laughs> she's donated so much yarn to the program that uh, I'm surprised there's any yarn left in St. Louis. May I ask her question, how do you collect the yarn? Now what I did, I invited Vince to the um, Auxil uh, Knights of Columbus uh, auxiliary women's meeting and let him show his wear and they put it in the bulletin and people just by droves I had two or three carloads of them. Oh, wow. I did it for Ascension the same thing and other places all you got to do is pass the word people who uh, one lady and her husband bought out a whole store of yarn that was on sale for this project. Wow. And I gotta go, but I love you. Oh, okay, Georgia. Thank I got, you. I, I never met sister. The, sister Martin. Um, I've heard of you. Uh, all, all different churches: Methodist churches, uh, uh, Lutheran, Presbyterian, uh, you name it. They, they all find out about me. I want to get involved. Question. Here's something that uh, did, I, I'm not sure if the fellow made this. I, it was with my knit goods. This is a. Does anybody recognize this? I know some of the fellows have made some wonderful uh, sweaters and stuff. But if this goes to a, a welfare outreach, some of these very lucky persons. Kind of, uh, this here? Well, oh. I'm just looking for a red bag. Oh. Does anybody maybe pick up a red bag by mistake? With snowflakes. Snowflakes on it? 
back by the charity arm. But they, it's not charity arm. It joins it. Maybe somebody that's already gone. We can we'll put it in the newsletter. I'm sorry. That's something else that was made. I don't know where that came from either. It was in one of my bags, and I, I don't know if one of the fellows made this or not. I've known several fellows that made some wonderful sweaters, and one one of the guys made this great sweater, and I was uh, admiring it, and I was taking it down to St. Vincent's Center down the city, and I, I saw my sweater that they made, and I really wanted to take it. I said, I could, nobody would have said anything. But then I thought, oh, we'll give it over. I know there's somebody walking down the streets of St. Louis somewhere with my sweater on there. <laughs> but where he got the instructions and everything, know how to make a sweater like that. And I know he made it himself. And, and, uh, and oh, one other, by like St. Vincent's down in the city, it's another place. Um, they have a food outreach program. Their statistics on St. Vincent says they hand out 65,000 meals a year from that church in conjunction with St. Peter and Paul. They hand out a bag lunch from a window every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And in the evening, uh, they invite anybody inside to have a hot meal. How do you schedule volunteers? for 365 days a year for all that. It's quite an operation. But I always use this as one of my math problems. I said, how many people are they servicing? Uh, 365 days a year, two, two meals a day. Uh, uh, kind of get the idea. It's a giant effort. Well, if anybody has any questions, I think I've I've gone on too long here. Thank you very much for having us. I'm going to encourage everybody to come and look at some of these items, too, because I've seen things knitted on looms, and they're not as nice as these. I mean, they really do a, a fabulous job. So, um, Again, if anybody hears of someone that might have picked up a red bag with some knitting,